What does it mean to talk of Jesus being long expected as we sing in the Advent hymn and elsewhere? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. So this is the second of our Advent parts series we're doing here for Christmas. And uh, let me read this one. We did some different hymns last time. This one is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And these stanzas, this is actually a very short uh, hymn. So this is half of it. <laughs> very short. Uh, it says, Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Um, and I'm, of course, focus on from our sins, it says fears, and, but, and sins release us. We always struggle with fear, even those of us who believe. And, I, and I'm convinced even more all the time, we just spoke to some, I was just speaking to somebody this week, that those who are fearful are doing, are closer to Christ in their fear than those who are confident. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so, so from our sins release us. And it, we, why is our hope in Jesus seems so much tinier than the great thing that he has achieved for us. And, and that it's sufficient. Right. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> it's... <clears throat> the factual story covers things that we would never have thought of in our wildest dreams. But the story tells us of these great things in detail, <clears throat> and especially the conquering of fear, fear of death specifically, fear of the future, fear of all kinds of things. And he announces that he has arrived to set us free from all those things. Um, I would never have imagined uh, in my tiny way the breadth of the deliverance and that it would be by death. He would conquer death by death, his own death. Who would have thought? By his own death, he swallowed up death. Yeah. What was it? The great line was it, was it out of Narnia was death began to work backwards? Yes. Everything began to work backwards. <clears throat> yes, yes. The, de the devil bit from the tree of life, took the bait, and ate the fruit of the tree of life, which is, you know, Christ Jesus on the cross. Yep. And this thing undoes all the, you know, begins yes. to do, uh, to undo all of the twisted stuff that had begun in the garden. Yeah, who'd have thunk? I wouldn't have. I'd be, I'd be thinking deliverance, but not the way it was given. I, I, that, and, and, and we were talking earlier, it's, uh, we, we human beings, we sinners tend to like to have Jesus sort of on our dashboard or something. We like to put him in a, a little box or something. And it is, he's, he's weaker. He is delivering us from the frustration with our bills or our taxes sure. or, he's, or, or our relationships we're struggling or we're fearful because somebody is sick or, you know, God forbid, dying or something like that. Big, I mean, these are big real life struggles. Yep. Um, there's any number of bad things that have been happening lately. And though he's, he hears our prayers, we, we want to focus on that sort of as the only or the primary thing yeah. he came to save me from. Great thinkers of the past spoke of this life as a veil, V-A-L-E, a veil of tears. And it is. And we see, that, we see that later there will be no more tears. He will wipe away all tears. Right. All that will be over. I, am, I still think there's going to be tears of joy. <laughs> okay. I imagine, I don't know. It's going to be so great. Well, or tears of laughter because the mockery is going to be through the roof. At least with my friends. <laughs> We've been talking about this recently. I fully expect that Jesus, it's going to be so happy. Jesus is going to be using me as the brunt of jokes so that my friends all roll on the floor laughing. Um, 
but w- we always seem to have an image of Christ, no matter how great the angelic or prophetic proclamation of what is coming and the promises come true. We see the promise right. coming true of Jesus, when, of, of our Savior, when he arrives. We make it so small. Yeah. We make the gifts so minimal, or Jesus is so weak that he can't actually completely save on his own. Right, right. And I'm looking at it going, this is, this is the, he says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. This is the guy who created everything. Yep. He spoke all of this stuff into existence. Yep. I want to give a shout out to a publisher, <clears throat> I think in England, Rose Publishing, and they put out really good stuff, fold-out pamphlets, names of the Savior, famous prophecies fulfilled in Christ, good stuff. Uh, it's worth knowing about them. Dad just gave you another homework project, so I'll have to make sure the links are in there. It's it's the, the hope is not a small hope. When we're when we're going towards from Advent towards Christmas, Christmas is so far greater than even the little things that we sort of struggle through and hope for every year. Yeah. Throughout throughout our lives, from from the mo- from our infancy until we die, yeah. our earthly hopes and dreams and so forth. We always, we always, Jesus is so far greater. This is the guy, this is the, this is in the flesh. This is the guy that if somebody stood in front of him would die. If when, when you're talking, when, when, um, when you have certain people either wanting to be in his, wanting to see his face, wanting to be in his presence, or or prophets going and standing with him as they're seeing the things that are coming up, falling as though dead. Yeah. Moses asking to see God and God announcing to him. I, you can't. It doesn't work that way. You would die. And so he puts him in a crevice and says, I'll show you my back. I think that we're all yeah. passed by. Right. There's always these ways God makes himself available, but he has to do it in a very particular way so he doesn't kill you just by being there. Yep. Because we, he is a holy God and we are wicked. We are sinful. And, but now Jesus is standing in front of us. We don't have that problem anymore. You now you're looking at him. This is the dude. Yep. I mean, so lowly is he that we can't imagine that's the guy. Uh, what is this? Jo- yeah. Isn't this Joseph and Mary's son? Right. Right. And that's what they said, even his family. Like, oh, come on. Yep. I used to play with him. Yeah, isn't he the woodworker? Mm-hmm. Didn't, he, didn't he make our furniture? Mm-hmm. We know this guy. All of a sudden, he's like, who is it? What are you saying, making him out to be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the Pharisees heard it. The Pharisees heard his words. Yep. He was very clear. You know, before, uh, before what was it? Was it before um, Moses was, I am? Before Abraham was. Abraham. <laughs> before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Some of those words, I can't yeah. believe they did, like, yeah. take out a knife and slay him on the spot. Right. Right. Whoo, smoking. Yep. But yep. it's true. Or, or references to the Old Testament where Jesus says, let me tell you what I meant when I wrote that. <laughs> like carving things into granite on the wall for, for Moses or something like that. Some form, some part of the Old Testament. When I put that together. Mm-hmm. So... Jesus is God in the flesh. This this newborn babe is he who spoke all things into existence. Yep. And the angels proclaim him to yep. the, the, the lowly shepherds. And the wise men arriving, somehow seeing in the stars that the king of Israel 
would be born and they were come to worship him. Yo, that's the nations. That, that's not Jewry. That's the nations. And one of the most offensive things that he ended up saying also was that he was here for the Gentiles as well. Yes. <sighs> yes. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're supposed to put us above them. Yep. You're going to make them, you're going to put their, you're going to drag us down and put us at all of us on the same level. I mean, that's, that's the way it would be. That's perceived sure. that way. Sure. A whole nother level of, of offense. Mm-hmm. This Jesus is offensive. I did not come to unite. I came, I came to divide. <laughs> His word divides. His word causes division. Yeah. Because it's truth that we don't want to hear. And yet so great is the proclamation that he is for us. And anyway, he's for yes. us anyway. Yeah. What is Romans 5, 8? While we were yet sinning, he died for us. Man. We, we don't know the depths of the for you that were given by the angel. We'll get to that. I'm going to be, we'll keep, keep working through that as we get to Christmas and, and past it. For you. For you so much that even while we're sinning against him, barking at him, trying to use his words against him, trying to corner him, trying to make him weak and say, I, either, either I will take it all on or, on or I don't need you at all. I'm good. You know, the rich young ruler going away sad <clears throat> because he was trying to show yeah. that he had done all that stuff. Right. As an interesting conversation with the rich young ruler. That's worth reviewing. We always, always got to have Jesus in a box. But he's so great that he's for us anyway. Yeah. While we do that. While we put him in a box and make him weak and, and we get frustrated and try to make him into something that fits us and makes me feel better. He's for me anyway, even when I'm sinfully doing that. Yeah. Me, sinful Ted, gets rescued in spite of myself. Yeah. He's for you in spite of yourself. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what all the thanks is for. Yeah. You know, we, we do all the thank yous because once you, once you understand that, that you don't deserve any of it, what you deserve, we confess, is condemnation and hell and all of that. Right. That's what we deserve. From a holy God. Mm-hmm. And even when I don't say thanks nearly enough, he still saves me anyway. Even my thanks sucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my repentance sucks. My thanks sucks. <laughs> it all <laughs> is a mess. <laughs> so, happy Advent. And Merry Christmas. Truly, this, this babe born in Bethlehem is for you, as we hear. And we'll read about that here in a moment. So we hope you're having a wonderful and blessed uh, Advent season and here in December. And we will see you on social media. Go to 1517.org for more. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.